This My Thoughts Monday is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Rolls-Royce of barbell monitoring technology, the Gym Aware. Guys, in-season training, we rock the Gym Aware all the time for quite a few reasons. The first, of course, is just that, the ding. Every time the athlete hears that, they know that they're hitting exactly what we need from them at that moment. And when they don't hear it, it brings out that extra little bit of competitiveness within themselves. On top of that, that awesome ding ends out bringing together the athletes as well, pushing each other and getting each other to be able to hit numbers that they probably wouldn't hit at that portion of the year. And finally, of course, that ding helps us monitor, manipulate, and keep track of volumes and intensities so we can best dose our athletes during the season at the right time with the right amount. Guys, hop over to kinetic.com.au and check out what Evan and the team down there have because this is absolutely a sensational product that's changed the way that we've trained our athletes. This edition of My Thoughts Monday is brought to you by Valve Performance, the team behind the Nordboard, Force Dex, the Groin Bar, and Human Track. Guys, the most important ability for all of our athletes is availability, and that's the absolute goal of Valve Performance, is to provide solutions to performance professionals so that we can get the right information to make the right decision at the right time for the betterment of the athletes that we get to work with. To do this, guys, they have a wide range of validated products that focus on usability and having been founded by the School of Exercise and Nutrition Sciences at the Queensland University of Technology, they're extremely evidence-based and they're beyond transparent. I can tell you that our time using the Nord board and being involved with Force Dex, we have been introduced to so many amazing people that have truly helped us become better coaches, have a better understanding, not just of the technology, but also what we're doing with our athletes. So make sure you hop over to valveperformance.com today to make sure you check out what they got. It's going to make you better and to do better by your athletes. Hey guys, how you doing? Devin McConnell, Head of Hockey Performance and Sports Science at UMass Lowell. Just wanted to uh, take a couple minutes doing My Thoughts Monday, something that's been kind of on my mind lately and, and um, just the time of the season that we're at right now is, is a part of the job, I guess. Um, so we're late, uh, just for context, ice hockey. We're going into the playoffs, um, thinking about how we train our healthy scratches. So hockey teams, our hockey team at least, we carry about 30 players on the roster, we can only dress 22. So on any given night, there's uh, there's roughly eight guys that aren't gonna be in the lineup. Second half of the year, so by the time we get through Christmas, um, at least this season, those eight guys are uh, pretty much kind of locked in. So the guys that, um, that are gonna be healthy scratches and do extra workouts on game days um, are, you know, essentially, they, they kind of know it at this point. They're not going to be getting in the lineup unless something happens, a guy gets injured or whatever, which does happen, which did happen recently. We had a guy break an ankle and a um, guy gets into a lineup that, that hasn't played for a long time. Um, so it's dealing with healthy scratches is can be a little bit tricky because these guys, you know, they basically know they're not going to play at this point in the year. Um, so that's pretty frustrating and disappointing for a lot of guys, obviously, it should be. Um, at the same time, it's my job to make sure they're prepared to play if we need them, if something happens, um, but you got to manage a little bit of the repetitiveness of the, you know, the frustration, like I said, and the disappointment of that. So it's it's a little bit of a balancing act, making sure that they're getting what they need and, and um, you know, motivating them and, and to find ways to continue to work, uh, even though the the light at the end of the tunnel can be tough to see. Um, and you know, the art of coaching side of like trying to make things um, as enjoyable as possible. So it's it's it can be a a challenge and a bit of a balancing act. I don't know that I ever get it right. Um, but one of the ways that I try to work around that is, you know, basically what happens is uh, we play Friday and Saturday night, right? So if you're not going to be in the lineup um, Friday night, the workout that we're going to do during the day and the guys find out sort of a team meal in the afternoon that they're not in the lineup, the, the training session you're going to have with me is really um, pretty low intensity, low load, high velocity, um, I really look at it as sort of a, a preparation session for the next night. I'm trying to prepare these guys to play as if they're going to be in the lineup uh, Saturday night. Again, that they may not be, uh, and in this case, they're probably not going to be unless something happens. But I don't want to crush these guys or, or run them into the ground. Uh, one, I don't think that that usually 
does much to help anyway, but certainly if they're going to get back in the lineup tomorrow night, I want them to be fresh. I want them to have good legs and good speed because that's going to help us. Uh, so our Friday workout is typically sort of a, a you know, sprint-based, speed-based, um, light Olympic lifts, some plyos, things like that, med balls. Our Saturday workout then is a little bit more developmental uh, in nature. So that's going to be uh, more of a workload type of day. We're going to lift heavier stuff. We're going to do some more conditioning, some more anaerobic type conditioning stuff because we're not going to have, we're going to have a day off on, on Sunday and back at it on Monday. So that, that training session on a Saturday, if you're not in the lineup, is going to be uh, more of a traditional, you know, total body lift, um, higher load kind of type of day um, from a developmental perspective. But where we get into the art of coaching at this time of the year, going into the playoffs, and it's been a long grind, is I start to give guys some, some options. So the first thing I do is instead of having uh, just one workout that they need to complete on each of those days, I give them a couple options. So they can pick and choose a little bit uh, within the, the confines, within the framework of what I need to get done. You know, at the end of the day, if they really like doing uh, snatch instead of trap bar jumps uh, for our explosive lift, like then go snatch. Uh, or vice versa, go trap bar jump. It's not gonna make a huge difference physiologically, but you start to give them a little autonomy and let them pick and choose. Would you rather dumbbell bench press or landmine press? Uh, you know, again, for me, you're getting a, a push in, um, so it's not a big deal. For them, they get to have some autonomy and, and get to pick and choose a little bit. And same thing on, on the Saturday lift, I give them a couple options. Um, uh, you know, we can RFE if that's, uh, if that's your ticket, or if you wanna switch that up and um, maybe do uh, um, K-Box squats. Uh, if you want to kind of mix and match a little bit, that's okay too, as long as we're, we're putting some work in. Uh, so that's kind of the first layer when we get into the second half of the season and it gets repetitive. And then once we get down to this point, I think it's really important sometimes just to scrap the whole thing and say, uh, you know, excuse my language, but fuck it, here we go, buys and tries today. And when the boys come in uh, and they're really grinding and it's a Saturday and it just sucks that they're not going, um, putting that uh, picture up on the TV screen and letting them know, hey, we're gonna have a little fun. Let's crank the tunes. You know, it's it's not a big deal. We're, we're, we'll have some fun in the weight room today. It's probably not gonna help us big time in the long run. Uh, but sometimes you got to be flexible like that from the coaching standpoint, right? That's the that's the difference between the art and the science. Uh, the the buys and tries workout is probably not on the science end of things, improving performance. But you know what? On the art side of things, keeping the the atmosphere going in the mood up with the guys that are grinding a little bit, I think there's a time and a place for that. So that's my My Thoughts Monday, guys, and, and uh, hopefully you take away a little bit or enjoy it. Uh, sorry, Jay, again, for the F-bomb, but uh, sometimes that's where you got to go. So thanks a lot, guys.